<laughs> While the Nigerian government took months uh, preparing for the October 1st Independence Day celebration, um, which was uh, the 60th, and some Nigerians did package theirs as well. Um, the government chose their own way of doing it, and all the Nigerian populace, the people, individuals also chose that. You know, prior to that day, we were told it was going to be a low-key event. The Ministry of Interior uh, trimmed the list of things that are needed for that event. That's the October 1st event. Nonsense. <laughs> Whether you cut down the list or not, we actually have no reason to celebrate freedom. Yes, we are in a serious mess in this country. And it didn't just start now, even after the independence. So sometimes I wonder why the colonial masters left at the point at that point in time. It is like we were better off than what we see now. It's like we can't rule ourselves. Things were working. There was a there were there was a good structure. We have good railway system, good roads. But right now, there is so much insecurity in the country. There's what we call ethnic cleansing, highest level of corruption ever. The time of colonialism, the right people qualified for the right positions. They occupied the right positions. Nothing like quota system nonsense. That is, you know, a northern man that is not qualified will be put ahead of you. Even what we see today with Buhari is worse. The country is long, run like a family business. Every office is headed by Buhari's friend or relative. Whether they fit into that place or not. My friend, Honorable, has repeated the same mistakes that the government has been making. They go after the messenger instead of dealing with the message. The message is very clear. Buhari has, through his ways forced several separatist movements in the country. Buhari's employment of nepotism as policy is the reason why you now have all sections of the country saying they are no more interested in this issue. The most problematic one is security. Two weeks ago, I went to somewhere in Katsina, specifically I went to Damusa, I went to Sapana, I went to Basari, I went to Dusuma, I also went to Kankara. In all these places, Fulani bandits are killing houses in multitudes and government is not there. This problem also replicates itself in several parts of our country and the government has not allowed a prosecution of all those people that have been killing Nigerians all over. Today, as we're talking, Buhari is still trying to seize ancestral lands so that he can find lands by force to resettle Fulani refugees escaping from Mali. Instead of him and the other West African leaders to come together and try to implement the 2015 peace agreement, no. All he's been doing is using one scheme after the other to try to seize ancestral land. He said grazing reserve, we said no. He said uh, cow colony, we said no. He said uh, he wants land for uh, uh, Ruga, we said no. Now again, he is talking about consolidation of all the streams and waters, and everywhere we have uh, waterways, plus six kilometers of land therefrom, so that he can have land and water, to be able to use to resettle refugees. This is not the right way to rule this country. So it's so bad that I don't see what is there to celebrate. This um, 68th independence commemoration, I don't see anything to celebrate. There is nothing worth celebrating. We are said to have independence, but it's like hey, we jumped from frying pan to fire. Buhari even was intense with his Independence Day speech. Could you imagine that kind of speech? He wanted to tell us why we must buy fuel higher and comparing us with Saudi that has a better economy, has things working. 
He failed to realize that there are other factors that must be considered while using Saudi as an example or any other country. There are other factors. You don't just compare us with Saudi. In Saudi, things are working. Here, you messed up things. That was a provocation. What was called independence speech is a provocation, of course. I know if the government does not even care. They know we didn't vote them in. And um, having won in a very unfair election, they are bent on taking a pound of flesh on us. That is just it. Well, they did their normal armed forces parade, marching. Nigeria did express theirs in various ways. Who, who went to watch them? Yeah. <laughs> A lady is currently facing threats from the way, uh, because of the way she observed her own, the way she expressed her own Independence Day um, commemoration, the way she did us. The lady is named Ella Edda. She took pictures of herself, um, you know, using the picture to depict what is happening in the country as Nigeria marked her independence. <laughs> she took pictures showing the state of the country. He talked about hunger, the bad roots, and other bad situation of the country. You know, since the Independence Day, October first, um, she that she shared the picture. A lot of people have been, you know, misinterpreting the concept, saying that she used um, the concept to mock the government. I don't think so. I don't think she used, she tried to mock the government. She is telling the story. As it is, she's even lenient. The government should know what the citizens need. You know, it has been happening before now that when someone, especially an ordinary person, speaks or acts in a way that, according to some mindset, uh, they, they feel it's mocking the government, uh, the government in power. As if um, she has committed a crime. She has committed no crime, she expressed her feeling. That is how she expresses it. And can any of you who is um, condemning her, who wants her to be nailed, can you um, oh, can you defend yourself? The pictures were so clear. That is what we are facing. And I let nothing happen to that lady. She expressed herself. Some people are suggesting she should be arrested. For what? You that suggested should be arrested, you should be. Ar you are the one that should be arrested, because she expressed herself. She showed her, you know, how it, she's feeling the pain. She's for me. I say she's even soft. She's lenient enough. What she displayed is less than what we are facing. Anyway, but I pity some of these our security operatives. They are suffering and smiling. Our, our people, security of those that are sent out to arrest people, arrest protesters, to make sure, you know, these are, these are guys suffering. People who are out to make sure life is better for you. They tell you, police, go and arrest him. You go and arrest. Buhari's government hates protest more than anything. But each time, they commit atrocities that cause for that protest. Yet, they don't want you to protest. Could you imagine? I, well, I just pity that those hungry policemen going out to beat manhandle protesters. They are fools. Yes, you are fools. People who are, they protest for you to have a better life. Yeah? You are like condoms that people use and dump. Can you tell me you are fine with your pay and what you take home as a policeman? Are you fine with it? Can you just use your brain for once? Allow your brain to work for you. I bet this Nigerian don't tire himself. Wow. Don't think he is short. Oh, you, some, of the, some of the time people call him small boy. Uh, see the plush hotel owned by Nollywood actor Usita Ihe, which some of us call Popo. You know, these guys, Aki and Popo, has become a household name. They are very funny. Oh, 
there are people you would like to watch their movies you can do a compilation even for like two decades now these guys have been on the screen and they have made money from the craft oh uh, some people say disability is no you can make money with the, your situation they are not even um, bad they found their talent in acting and oh these guys are good Osta Iheme has a beautiful hotel in the heart of Oweri, Imo State and the hotel is called Resident Hotel In rounding up, Nigerian man lost his Lexus Jeep after using it to bet in Anambra. <laughs> he used his Jeep to bet money. <laughs> he lost his car after using it to place bet. That was in a Navy Anambra state. And a Twitter user shared this. A Twitter user disclosed it. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Uh, but that's it. Gambling, that's what you expect from it. He went to a gambling shop and has taken ownership. The ownership of the the owner of the gambling shop has taken <laughs> charge of his car. He went to bet with his car. Some bet with house. Uh, there's a place in the near with there. They some bet with houses. There are different things they bet with. He went to try with his Lexus Jeep and <laughs> man, the thing are now now who fought? Uh, maybe there there were times he made huge money. <laughs> Oh, he bet. He did bet, and he won certain things. Uh, the guy won that. <laughs> that is what is it gambling? Hmm? You heard that song? They say even there are also um, some of these gamblings that are um, skeptical. There are there are tricks they employ to dispossess you of what you have. Yeah. Um, there's one song I do. I can't sing this song. You got good eye. No when they walk away. No when they na na na. No when they run. You got count your money. I think um, I don't know if it's Kenny Rogers, but Yellow Man later did the song. That is what you get in gambling. Meanwhile, this is where we draw the curtain for the day. Please subscribe to our channel. Also, click on the bell icon to get our updates anytime it drops. Bye for now.